Hang on, you're still muted. Thank okay. you. All right, are we ready to go? I'm ready to go if everyone else is ready to go. Yep, you should be going. We're, rec we're recording now. Fantastic. All right, we'll go ahead and call the meeting the order. Uh, can we do the whole? We have one item on the agenda tonight, and that is Safer Access to Neighborhood Destinations, or SAND, uh, project briefing. Great, so I will introduce you to Shivani La. She comes to us from the city of Kent. She is a uh, civil engineer of three with the public um, department. And we were fortunate enough to uh, be able to get a grant from the Office of Traffic and Safety, one of the legacy projects that um, um, Angie left us and applied for. Um, this is a unique project in itself, and Shivani will go into more details, but it's unique in that it's not being done elsewhere. And it's really a pilot project to look at voluntary traffic safety education instead of working through enforcement actions and trying to, trying to um, change behavior through enforcement. The desire is to try and modify behaviors through education and understanding. So at this point in time, I'll turn it over to Shivani and let her go through the presentation. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for having me here. Um, like Martin said, I'm fairly new here, but my family has been for 20 some years in Southland County. So we use rented parks, amenities. So this is like our second home with little ones that park hopping was something that we did when they were little. So I'm super excited to be part of this amazing program and pilot effort. It is unique. It's using um, residents' navigation and how they're moving around their communities and then advocating and developing educational program and having the traffic safety lens. Um, so I'll get started. So before you, you have some sample of materials that I'll be using to inform public engagement. We have smaller printed out in the back as well and the QR code for a story map. So the first part of the presentation, I will kind of go over the- Giovanni, I'm yeah. sorry to interrupt. You're not sharing your screen. Okay. So we see it in here. It's Can not you showing there. Of a... No, it's not. I'll be right there. Actually, we'll go oh, over, uh, over Judith uh, in the corner there, see if you can. Should be a different view, yeah. Uh, that, that maximize it, yep. yeah. And then should be a share screen. Yeah. We're on it, Julie. There. Okay. Right. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we shop keto. We're personal. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry about that, Judith. Um, Now, next slide. I look down. Oh, there you go. go. Um, so this is a collaboration between Washington um, Traffic Commission and City mm -hmm. of Renton. Like Martin said, it's unique. Um, traditionally, it's more of an enforcement program. So the Walk, of, Walk and Roll Safety Grant, Benji applied for that application, and it was awarded. City of Renton is um, doing pilot programs in two test areas, and we'll go more in details about why those areas were selected. Um, and so far. Um, we've been collaborating with communication staff, park staff, building on relationships and programs that we can deploy as a program moves forward. So um, the two neighborhoods that were identified had data four times more of distracted driving collisions in the spaces compared to the next highest um, data set in the city of Renton. So focusing. I don't mean to interrupt so early, but when I read that and saw that, I I wondered, was it identified as to why why that's the case? That just seems like a major outlier to to some. It is high, and as an end user, as a mom with kids and biking and pedestrian walking, you know that's that's a very high number. There could be a multiple multiple of things, whether language be a concern, um, understanding how traffic safety or traffic rules or laws operate. So one of the findings not in this city um, was done is as simple as how to safely cross a sidewalk, uh, cross a pedestrian crossing is not something that people know how to do it. 
So that was a finding from one of the research. However, for these two areas, it was just collision data sets that we looked at. Um, so when that application was done, identifying the data set, that the data supporting these two neighborhoods sort of float up top, that we definitely need to bring uh, or understand how the patterns are, what, what is happening here. So the pilot is actually developed into including elementary school, middle school, and high school, and parents and adults. So that's a holistic approach of residents and neighborhoods. And then as professionals for um, traffic safety, myself, and working with other departments, parks, PD, and seeing where the gaps are. So we'll do analysis later on to address that. So just wanted to share what we've done so far. So the grant was applied in 2021 in March. It was awarded in November of last year. Um, I joined the team April of this year. And most of my focus have been, how do I capture this story and how do I share this with internal and external stakeholders? So development of the Esri story map with the QR code um, shares that and we'll, discuss, we'll go over that in second part of this presentation and also how that could be received by residents as a new resident to this space if people are relocating here or just trying to know what programs the city's offering and supporting in the Benson Hill neighborhood and West Hill neighborhoods. Um, the story map can be transferred into their uh, preferred language. So that's also a neat feature of the Esri story map. And then we're working with communication staff to develop other printable materials for users or residents who may not have access to a smartphone. Um, so we're providing and sharing this information before we start with the community. So the three questions um, leading this effort is um, getting to know what are the destinations in your neighborhood. So as a resident, where do you go in your neighborhood? Do you go to the community park? Do you go to a church or a school? How do you get there? Do you walk? Do you take a bus? Do you get in a car? Do you take a trail routes? Um, and if there's any concerns, are there things that you're avoiding because of X, Y, Z? engaging the community and this is where um, making an effort and meeting the residents where they are already i will be attending um, the movie night at liberty park this friday to so certain events kind of engaging the audiences um, and sharing how they navigate the space and then um, partnering up with the parks program which is these two neighborhoods getting the youth involved and just doing that engagement of fun activity and assessing the current mobility in their space. So the other part of it that I'm passionate about is that it empowers youth. Um, there's an avenue of it where you have background in transportation demand management. So not everybody can own cars and drive. Mobility is a concern. And as we go with population growth and development, I think traffic transportation demand management is key. So identifying the pattern, and especially if it's the first mile or last mile, if you can walk them mile or bike and pedestrian safety is, is key in this pilot. Yeah. Um, so strategically, there's planned activities. So we're in the very first stage community assessment, assessing, asking those questions. Um, these maps will be used for any community engagements. We have smaller maps in the back that we could post in walls, um, community centers, and so forth. From that, we will develop three deliverables, which is a school-based traffic safety de deputy uh, academy. So again, using the youth, seeing what they see, using the resources that's available, engaging them and having them develop a safer way to walk, whether it be bright colors, um, crossing safely. Uh, and then for high school students is um, student youth driving council. So as they're transitioning into and starting becoming um, young adults, safety to as a driver's being mindful of pedestrian safety and um, bike safety so they will be that pile of that program there and then adult responsible driver advisory group and then these have key tasks that's been identified in the grant and we'll work towards that and then as how depending on how the community will engage and take we may change and pivot a little um, 
important thing is collecting the data and listening to the residents because we want to make sure that we're educating them around their current patterns and if we can improve that experience through traffic safety lens um, for bike and head. This is the strategies um, for first stage assessing the community to identify the preferred routes, if there's any concerns, um, design assessment toolkits, um, the map that you have in the back is the simple map that's included into community event programs where um, the youth may take a green marker and say, okay, I live on this polygon right here and I go to this park and this is how I go, or I avoid this area and we use a red marker for that and reason. So engaging more of an experience-based learning, um, that's, that's for that category there. And then utilizing social media and communications to really engage those communities in that space um, and partnering up with the community groups as well. So that's key part. Um, and that's where I'll also need support. So if you have a community group in this space that you like that would benefit from it, I'd love for feedback or group names distributing community assessment kits, preferred travel routes, network gap. So once we have enough data. Right? I'm sorry, I didn't want to no, go ahead. As so I just asked him, so would you kind of, uh, am I interested in this correctly, is how you access one point, point A to point B, but with different, uh, in different ways, not just driving, so walking or using bicycles or that's specifically the data that you're collecting. All, okay? all, pretty much all data within your community. How do you move around? What are the okay. destinations you go to, and okay. how do you get there? And and if, for example, if my choice is to use my car because I don't have sidewalks because it's dangerous because I can uh, safety for safety issues, the data will provide a space for that kind of response. Yes. Okay. So right now it's very early in the space, but ultimately, yeah, the development of a survey to collect those hard data sets would be something would benefit this program. And that's where this Pesri story map comes in. I'll explore the interactive web map where you can actually map your routes and you can input those information. So then we can see like in these maps, if you live in a neighborhood that you don't see a darker gray, then we know that there's no sidewalk there. Yeah. Yeah. And that could be a concern as a resident to you know, feel comfortable walking there. Yeah. Thank you very much. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you. Those are great questions. And then end of this strategy, we'll have a summary report, results, um, stakeholder, they, um, neighborhood traffic safety group. So working even with signals um, manager and supervisor, traffic safety, um, PD, making sure all the city staff are at the table or at those events to answer any questions and provide feedback. Strategy two and strategy one and two are really the fun, exciting experience. Um, working with the youth in the community, school districts, um, before and after school care, any additional extracurricular activities. So strategy two is focusing on a little bit of older age population, um, youth, middle schoolers, high schoolers, designing traffic safety activities, um, supporting materials, designing activities for the community simple as taking an audit walk from their school to their neighborhood community or a park creating those experiences and seeing what's around them through the lens of pedestrian bike safety and seeing what how the environment looks and can we have the behavior change from taking a bike of making sure the helmets are in place making sure you're using the right side of the roads and so forth and then once we have those strategies completed, we'll have a graduation, um, celebrating those programs being completed. Strategy two. And strategy three is um, focusing on the youth driver council. So this is where the high school comes in place. Um, City of Renton already has a youth court that we'll be leveraging. So we already have programs within the city um, that we'll just leverage engage the audience um, for these two um, areas and then supplement that events and then assisting on implementing youth driver council group projects so if there's a specific group projects that the um, the community engagements or the youth engagement comes out of we want to 
support that effort and develop that. And then strategy four is focusing on the older, um, but, uh, more of a yeah, adult populations um, in these two neighborhoods. Again, the data was fairly high, making sure if there is any barriers, what it is, how we could improve that awareness, or if it's developing into certain um, languages um, or certain style of traffic safety. Once we're at that stage, we could develop that and facilitating that. So one of the things also to point out is the level of um, level of traffic stress. So if you're a pedestrian walking and you mentioned sidewalk, so we want to be mindful of those experiences and capturing those experiences. So during any interactions, if you um, say you live in this neighborhood and this is the destination you go to, as the person collecting the data will make sure that it's mapped correctly and will look at those um, identifiers to process it and see what possible choices or outliers that may hinder or increase that level of stress as a pedestrian or a bike. Does the any of these maps have the, the, I don't think they have, we have bike lines included? Show bike lanes. Yes, yes, they are. So it's the very bottom. There's this um, existing okay. trails. Okay, bike gotcha. and proposed. I uh, street bike. <clears throat> so the ones that that we okay. So we don't have that thing because it's not really kidding. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the, the overlay is from our yeah. uh, adopted trails of ice master plan. Is what you're looking at there. Um, okay. Okay, thank you. Um, so this is a strategy for is coming towards the tail end of it. So it is a two year program. So we're looking at this strategy for is really a year and a half into the program. By that time, we've been done enough community engagements, received some data sets, went back and looked at certain things and identified city asset, assets um, to make sure the infrastructures that we have through traffic safety is there or if it isn't, then identifying that as well. Um, and then developing the community planning area, the projects identified as responsible drivers advisory group. So that is the key takeaway. So again, just supporting the youth in this space and then having them elevate the projects that they see in the framework and the support that we can provide. The next part of this presentation, I just want to show you the two maps of the area. Um, this literally was printed at five o'clock. I wasn't sure that I'm gonna get this big map for you guys. So I'm yeah. so glad <laughs> it came in. Um, so this is um, also shared. I'll share this on the online um, story map, but it's searchable. It has all your information. You can use a search engine to um, search magnifying glass to look at your address and then look at all the neighborhoods um, destinations around you. So it's really um, functional and um, helpful for a classroom engagement for middle school and high school. Um, so where you could get us, you know, 20, 30 students in a setting and really gauge and collect that experience of what are your neighborhood destinations? How do you get there? Uh, and just those maps will be up on screen. Sand, sand, yes. sand app. Yes. Okay. And I have a question. Um, oh, you're fine. Um, so when people are navigating this, if they see things that aren't on here, do they have a place where they can, if there's a like a destination that's not on the map, they go to like a child care center or something that's not on the map, is there a place for them to say, oh, I go here and it's at this address or? We can, um, we'll have to upload that feature, but that is something that's in a phase two of that feature right now is just kind of getting comfortable with the space and that could be like within weeks that we can upload it where we can map this and then provide feedback. Okay. So yes, it's very doable. That's a good point because a lot of these neighborhoods, the, the destination is just outside of the area as well. Yeah, so, or there's, yeah. you know, like little small areas that may not have been yeah. picked up but that's somewhere that someone goes like, mm -hmm. like if there's a child care center that you can make it on the map but that's where they go or they walk there or whatever yeah just you know absolutely very good uh, feedback and that's exactly what you know our residents will with community engagement say um, 
we had our communication staff just looked online and Google and Google all oh, these yeah, yeah, yeah. No, data sets. So. Totally. It's impossible for someone <laughs> until you're talking to the community. To yes. Get a full depth and breadth of where someone might go. So that's why I was yeah. asking if it was, if there was a functionality for them to be yep. able to add that in there. So in a story map that I'll share just after this couple more slides, then yes, absolutely. Um, it's not active quite yet, so you won't be able to do it right now. I just want to clarify that part, nope. but yes. Uh, so this is the West Hill, similar layout, orienting up the users. And again, going back to the middle schoolers, high schoolers, um, and elementary school students, this might be the first time they see a map of the space where they live in. So having that perspective and having them navigate that they're early, you know, they can easily adapt to and provide us that information. And, you know, that's pretty much the same pilot. Um, it's in the very beginning stages and now we just have work that needs to be taken care of and um, lots of community engagement, working with parks, working with communications, making sure these community areas are um, researched um, to address and develop the pilot further. All right, thank you. I know we've already had a few questions. I suspect there may be a few more. Uh, I will, uh, I'll jump in if, if no one's deferred on it. First, I want to say, uh, Shivani, welcome and thank you for the presentation. Um, this was so informative to me. Uh, certainly, yeah, the staff had already got identified earlier. Um, uh, the distracted driving, which happens to be in my neighborhood, stood out to me, and then even more so when the crosswalk in the in this uh, slideshow was my kid's school. So I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Um, so and and great to see uh, the overlay of, of of kind of everything we have. Mike's trail master plan. I, I definitely really really um, love the vision. I know a lot of that's built on um, from various planning documents, so going all the way probably back or back or continuing through the Benson Hill plan. Um, I guess the question I have that came from this up in my head, obviously, I'm assuming we've been doing some level of partnership on the school district throughout this process. And so what, can you tell me a little bit more about what that has looked like and what sort of input? Because obviously, we're talking to students, it sounds like a lot. Um, the district specifically, how have they worked through this with us? So um, the district, so MJ Communications and Jennifer and Parks are my supporters. Um, so I'm going through them navigating that space, but as right now school is sort of out, so it's summer, but connecting with um, this rent and innovation uh, community. Oh, uh, uh, Skyway? The yes, part, yeah. yes. yes, and then rent and school district as well, and connecting with them for the students part, but one of the information that was shared was most of their students have before and or after school event with Renton Parks. So um, we have specifically those neighborhood schools um, connecting with them to do that because I, I envision like our docent to do things, engaging, especially with the younger kids, like what are your destinations and how do you get there? Uh, but we're not 100% quite there. Yet. Okay. We also just started, uh, this is the very first stage of the so we're just kind of out there. Some of us have to progress. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
they are not distracted so that I don't end up on the side of the road. Um, so I, I love this. I absolutely love this. I think it's going to be so informative for us to hear from our residents on um, uh, what's uh, what they need. I wonder if that's yeah. actually tied into the quantum. Yeah, it's my job. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about it. Yeah, I was going exactly with that. Um, Receiving the data is going to be very informative and very important. However, we have, uh, we know already, we have the data already, that if we want to be a walkable city, we want to be a, a pedestrian friendly city, uh, we need to uh, allocate more funding to that area. We really need to make it our priority. We really need to make sure, like Council Member uh, Prince say, since forever, we have been saying this is a priority. We cannot ask people to walk to point A to point B, or use a bicycle from point A to point B if we're not providing safety for them. And what worries me is that this is an incredible program, but I what I want is the feedback to say, yes, this is the reason why we're not doing it, but we don't have the resources to provide a solution, which is, has been over and over the problem that they come and ask us for the sidewalks and then we say, yes, but we don't have the funds for this because sidewalks are very expensive, right? So I, I think we need to, and with a goal that proactively with the information that the data that we're gonna collect in, how we're gonna be solving those problems. I will be very curious to see, as Council Member Prince mentioned, if the people that live surrounding the Cascade Elementary School, instead of taking their children walking to the school, they're driving them. So what was the reasoning behind this, you know? Uh, yeah, they, they, I'm live there, you may know. Now, to be honest with you right now, I'm concentrating my, more my topics up on Benson Hill because I live very close to Benson Hill and I know more uh, this area, but it was very shocking to see the West Hills uh, uh, neighborhood. Uh, 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 I mean, they, they're basically no sign walk in, in, anywhere, anywhere, you know? so. And I know that we're right now concentrating more about sidewalks and maybe there are like 10,000 10, other reasons where they, what they use to move to one place to another one. And that's the reason why you guys are doing this. But the two things that are very, uh, for me, that are very important. One is safety. And the other one is to uh, offer all the benefits that we can offer to keep preventing the, the to be one of the neighborhoods that has the most conditions. Uh, out there, this is this data is actually kind of scary, you know, because you want to protect children, you want to protect pedestrians, and, and, and I think we need to put up some of our uh, focus on those priorities. But thank you very much. This presentation was great, and this yeah. is well, I feel that we're going to the right place. I probably should uh, yeah. let you know that, that we did a sidewalk survey, and that's what this these maps are generated from. But yeah. we didn't do the survey up in the West Hill because that's not in the city currently. So that's why you probably are not seeing. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, and I asked yeah. him. I say, hey, this is not part of the city, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's why you're not seeing this because we didn't survey it an unincorporated area. Yeah. We only surveyed the city area. Point, yeah. Honestly, the county has been horrible at sidewalks for yeah. since forever. And, and, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry because you're not able to do that, but coming to that, com, com, this is what we were insane because since we were incorporated in the city of Renton in the Benson Hill area, and because it was incorporated in County, there are not sidewalks and we really have not put any money on there uh, after more than 10 years that we have incorporated on sidewalks. It's sad, that's part of the, the sad story. Sorry. Sidewalks just go to all of them. Down to said we, we've done the study, so we're kind of doing the analysis now in terms of what our existing sidewalk conditions are like, what there are missing sidewalks, and we're kind of putting that together and putting it down. And with our paving to come back to is one of the reasons we talked about was potential transportation mm -hmm. benefit this thing. But we got to have the data to be able to support mm -hmm. it. It yeah. shows you that there's a real need here that will support but obviously the funding there. It's one of the key you know, key pieces of, of being able to implement something like that would be having the funding to do it. Why that would be a surprise. Something that's reacted by, by all the public. We just have to look at a phase in terms of how we do it. But this is kind of information to help us prioritize some of those things that we need to get through. But as we work through that, because it's not going to be a one pass and then it's going to all get fixed in, in two years. It's going to be a long term process, but we got to start somewhere else. Kind of what I heard from you guys. <laughs> yep. That's my obviously. He, he basically just addressed it. I, I know it's early on, but you know, it's kind of like when you're 
you, you hear something in, in your house in the walls and you're like, okay, is that creepy? Is that whatever you're like? Okay, should I check it out or not? Because if I find out, I can't afford to fix it. So you just, so this is the awareness part and we, and we, we educate ourselves and then we find out, oh my God, what can we, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just wondering as far as I know it's early, so I'm not really asking for the answer, but you just answered in that last bit. This is just kind of un, you know, taking the, 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 the cover off the thing. So then kind of planning from there, priorities and things like that. And then kind of educating them to do what we can to fix as far as the, the, the youth and all that. That's kind of- There may be something we could do based on the dollars or maybe the community wants more. Maybe pay more for part of this without the show the data that supports it. Yeah. 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 That's what I understand. And to answer the West Hill um, area, GIS uh, manager Josh was able to pull the crosswalk. So there is some data that you will see, but that is what the King County shared that data set. Mm -hmm. So it. unfortunately, it does look yeah. like it doesn't have much. And this is all around the school district here, pretty much everything yeah. we're seeing. Pretty much, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you'll have um, residents who may live within the boundary of Renton, but they actually go to school yes. yeah. and they they may walk up to the boundary and then from there, the disconnect of the sidewalk. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I did it right this time. Yeah. But council. Let's go, council member. Very good. Appreciate it. Um, thank you, this is amazing. Really exciting. I live in the I, I live in the Benton neighborhood and I can actually see my house from here, so it's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> really love this interactive map. And, just suggestion of, uh, for community contacts. Have you thought about local HOAs, homeowner associations in those various neighborhoods? For because I know at least the Twenty Park homeowner associations, they are um, local. Okay. So they love they would love to hear from them. Okay. Yeah. For yeah. Mm -hmm. Homeowner associations are I think a wealth of knowledge. I know they're usually residents that have been around for a while. They're very invested. They're homeowners, which I know we want to reach out to renters and everybody else. But it might be a good hub for information in those neighborhoods. Um, so. Yeah, that's my one thing. I may have had something else that maybe. Oh, I will we still be tra uh, tracking collision data throughout this process? Yeah, that's done separately. Okay, so it's by law. Yeah, we, we actually uh, actually download all the Washington State Patrol traffic accidents. So we just automatically do that all the time. So we create a list of high accident locations and things like that. It's just part of our daily business that we do. And one of the things that strategically I wanted to use GIS environment and mapping is because in, in historic data sets, you could then go back and say in 2022, we did this five years ahead or 10 years ahead, and you have this, and you can then underlie it. So it's like Google Images, like when you look at the historic view and now the current view, and you see, so that's, so that's, that's a good point on the HOA. I guess I would just throw onto that real quickly. The neighborhood program, I'm assuming it's an area we're probably- Yes, yeah. we're yeah. working yeah. with Remy and um, those, yeah. yeah. I don't know who was next. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the um, the distracted driving uh, collision data. You know, when you hear collisions, you're thinking car to car and that sort of thing. And just talk about in the, uh, the school school districts and the, the, all that kind of good stuff. Is there some some sub data that actually shows? I mean, is this all car car? Is this car pedestrian? Car pedestrian. Is there any sub data that shows how many may have involved school kids versus? adults or whatever it is when it comes to that sort of thing. It's something that's always searchable because that's the information is on not that they're students but the ages mm -hmm. on the actual traffic report. So anything that's on the traffic report you can't actually search by that. Yeah. Okay. okay. I didn't know if it hadn't been done, yeah. been done yet. Yeah. Okay. That question made me think of another question real quick. Um, I, I recall, obviously, we were doing kind of a neighborhood case by case basis on reducing speeds to 20. I want to say the legislature changed that process. Is that out of any of this? Is that something we're going to be looking back and coming through for the recommendation to council on a, of areas where we see those sort of incidents that would justify lowering the speed, or that's where we still stick with the same process we would have with? By well, for that particular program, we've been sticking with the petition process when people come to us, but we are proactively looking at the speed hump program right now. So we're looking at seven different areas for speed humps, particularly Lake Washington Boulevard. We're already doing some public outreach uh, regarding the speed humps along Lake Washington Boulevard. So that's something we'll be a little bit more proactive on because we've got the data showing that people are speeding in these particular areas and the education part of it and the enforcement part of it hasn't been working long term. So we're looking at physical devices in those particular areas where the data is showing us that we need to do something else. 
And thank you for talking about that because if I think there is one complaint, number one complaint is speedy. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, just bringing the idea that we is doable to do some speed, speed bumps is very refreshing because yeah. in the past it was a big hard no. Yeah. And we have been talking a lot with the rental regional fire authority to accommodate to special speed bumps that it's not going to be for them an issue, but it will be lowering the traffic. And yes, there is a lot of neighborhoods, which is very fascinating because I, I always have said it as a neighborhood, you first ask for those. And then the neighbors are the first ones that are going to start complaining about the speed bumps. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's yeah. but, uh, but anyway, uh, thank you for sharing that information yeah. because I remember just a couple of years ago, it was a hard no. I mean, the speed bumps was like a no, 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 never. You know, so. Yeah, we definitely involved the police and fire, and uh, we got to the point where we have a speed hump that's able for them to navigate over. So it will be re reducing response times and things like that. And just one more tool in the toolbox. It's obviously not the yeah. first, first crisis, but it's been, we want to start the process of education, we start the process of trying to understand the science of seeing what happens. And if we start, there's less disability improvements and more of an advisory nature. Let's find whether that's effective or not. That sure. work. But sure. if it's not, then we want to make sure we have continuing to have opportunities to do this. Not to say, well, I tried that. And didn't work. So, so that's the beauty of the speed hunt. This is a very personal note, but uh, uh, I grew up in an area that literally is speed bumps every single block. You know, so you need to learn how to drive in a neighborhood like that because specifically your car gets very, very damaged. <laughs> uh, and, and yes, I have seen it firsthand that it does control traffic. It does uh, damage a lot of the cars and it, it, it brings a lot of complaints in the neighborhood. But yes, it does control traffic. But as you said, it is not the only solution. I have seen it in any other way. We have tried the, what do you call the roundabouts? And, we try, and it, you know, the, the, this day with technology, also there is limit, limitless, right? The, the, the things that we can do. Um, so I'm very eager and looking forward to see some, some of the series what we can do to control speeding. Especially in this area, this area is very tricky. Very tricky, you know. But I, will, I will say that that roundabout at the end of one sixteen. Oh yes, yeah. it's going to be slow down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I've heard that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. expressway. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And the good thing about roundabouts is that the intersections they stop the number of T-bone collisions. Yeah, yeah. Collisions are really glancing for it because they're going around. Whereas before, you used to have somebody would go around, they'd go around. Yeah, T-bone right, so you don't have as much damage when these things happen. So a lot of those injuries are really. Thank you. And also solidly on team roundabout. So um, this <laughs> this has been great. This is a good first start at, or opening this. Um, again, welcome. So glad we could steal you from Kent. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I look forward to more to come from this. So thank you very much. Uh, we'll you. go ahead and adjourn today the whole. We'll reconvene at full council at seven o'clock. Thank you. Thank you.